about a few things really that, that, that stuck with me. And um, you know, as a church, um, back in sort of September, October time, we, we wanted to refocus the church vision. And, um, and, and you, you know, because it's on the notice sheet, and we've been talking about it for a number of months now, um, that our, our, our vision as, as a fellowship uh, and as a, as, a, as a people is to be Jesus in our community and to all nations. Okay? And that is, uh, that is the vision that we have as a fellowship. And that we also have four things that we put in as helping building blocks to help bring that to life. And that is to love and belong and to grow and serve. Uh, but the fundamental part of our vision is about being Jesus in, in our community and to all nations. And last week, Alan was, was sharing about the, 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 the passion. So he was talking about um, a song that we sung, and we sung it again this morning, that we're standing on the edge of something new. Okay? And that we're asking that God will take us deeper and further than we've ever gone before. And on Thursday, uh, at, at our house group, um, I thought, when you sing those words and you are talking about God and maybe the desire to go further than we've ever been before, you're almost stepping out into something, well, because you've never been there before, what is it that we're actually asking God for? And so I asked the group, really, just to think about, well, what is it that you want? What is it that we're wanting to go deeper into? Um, because that, in a way, is important. Because um, if we're standing on the edge of something new, and we're wanting to go deeper and further than we've ever been before, we ought to know... Uh, what at least, to in part, what our desire is for, for that to, to happen and, and to, in, in our life. And because Alan was also talking about, you know, forgetting the former things, he was talking about in Isaiah 43, so forgetting the past of how we got to this point. Um, so that'll be, and, and you, you talked about the fears, um, but also the successes, you know, we don't want to be just defined by our history. It's actually, the, the definition that you said was that, that we want to be defined by Jesus' vision for us. You know, that future vision for us, and that's really, really important, okay, as, as, as a church and as individuals, that we individually are defined by what Christ has got for each of us, okay? Because if we are going to be Jesus in our community, okay, well, if we're going to be Jesus in our community, that means that we're going to have to be it means that we're going to have to be, as it says in Ephesians 5, verse 1, imitators of God. Because that's the only way that we're going to be Jesus in our community. You know, because it is important, and it's important that we understand this, because it's that foundation that the world is crying out for. It's that bit of our Christ-like nature, okay, that is going to transform yeah. where we are today, transform our streets and our neighbourhoods, North Leeds, South Leeds, the whole of West Yorkshire, the whole of Yorkshire, hopefully into Lancashire, <laughs> God willing, all things, are possible. all things are possible, and the North and South of this country, and then to the ends of the earth. Because it's that Christ-like nature that is fundamental to everything that we do. Now, I don't know about you, I found it really easy to have a Christ-like nature. It's quite hard, isn't it? It is really, really hard to be Christ-like in everything that we do. But that's what we're called to be. Okay? If this world is going to be transformed, yeah, even Diamond will laugh at that, all right? <laughs> and she knows me, okay? It is true that it is really hard to have a Christ-like nature. But, okay, the model is there, okay? You look in this Bible, the model is there. There is no point, okay, trying to model anything else, okay? So we can talk about great Christian leaders. We can talk about people that inspire us today. But the reality is, there is only one model. There is only one role model, okay, that we should be modelling our lives on. And he's written about in this book. Okay? So there's everything that we need in this book about what 
Christ-likeness is. His nature, okay, is in this book. And we're going to get on to some of these. Because I think it's important to read some of the verses about what the nature of Jesus is about. Because if that is our desire, our focus, our church's vision, and our church vision isn't just our church vision, it should be our vision, individual desire to be more like Christ. Yeah? Because it's not just, oh, well, you know, I'm not like Christ, but it's all right, 90% of the church are, so that's okay, because 90% of the church are Christ-like, and they're all doing it, so it's okay if I'm not. That's not what it means. Each of us has to have Christ-like nature. Like each of us has to be having the vision and the focus of becoming imitators of God individually and take responsibility for that, those steps ourselves. So let's just have a look at some of the stuff, okay, um, about the role model that Jesus is. And uh, let, let's just have a look at, at Matthew 16. It's really, you, you know, I'm a leader in this church and um, in, in my workplace I manage a, a few people. It is really hard sometimes, okay, when you start in hierarchies, if you're near the top of a hierarchy or, you know, uh, uh, and you're not at the bottom, Jesus' nature wasn't about hierarchies. He was the God incarnate who came down to serve on the earth so that we might have a relationship with God. And, you know, everything that he talks about, um, let just uh, Matthew 16, verse 24. This. Then Jesus said to his disciples, so Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life uh, for, for me will find it. We must deny ourselves. And that's really hard. We were talking about it on, on Thursday, weren't we? This balance of, in our lives between what we need, you know, our earthly needs to provide and to do things, does sometimes seem that we can't do what God wants as well. And it's really difficult. It's a really difficult balance. But we, okay, as, as followers of Christ, must learn to deny ourselves, okay, and take up our cross and follow, follow Jesus. Because if we want to save our life, okay, we need to give it up for Christ. We need to submit our life. And submit, the word submit is such a difficult word in today's society. Nobody wants to submit. Nobody wants to submit to authority. Nobody wants to submit to their wives or to anybody. Or, or nobody wants to submit to Christ. Everybody's saying, I have a right. It's my right. But it's not. He has given his life for us. And he's asking us to submit to his authority. Deny ourselves for him. Because it's a challenge. Okay? It's a challenge. And these are his words. Okay? Matthew 20. I just want to read a few things about, um, about Christ's nature for us. Matthew 20, verse 25 to 28. A couple of pages on. Again, Jesus said, Jesus called them together and said, You know the rulers of the Gentiles, lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you, among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to serve, be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And he wants us to have that mindset. Okay? He wants us to have that mindset, okay? Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. It's turning the world on its head. It completely... You, you, you know, Jesus was so... I, I, I mean, some of the things he said were just completely nuts. If anybody walked up to you and said, 
you know, come follow me, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Well, I know the context now. We all understand what that means, don't we? We all understand that now, don't we? Because of Jesus' life. But if he said that to you, and you were just walking down the street or doing a job, you, you were doing something, your, your own job, and he came up to you and said, you know, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. It just sounds nuts, doesn't it? It just sounds completely mad. But he did things, okay, for a purpose. Okay, he wanted to do things that the challenge of our lives is about not for going with the flow. He could have, you know, held, you know, said, I'm, I'm trying to get a group of uh, uh, good disciples together, you know, and uh, we're going to meet at this point, and of those people that might want to be disciples, but he didn't. He walked through, and he handpicked people. He saw where God was touching people, okay? And this is kind of what we're called to be, people that are going to step out and do things differently. There is a real challenge in here, okay? John 13, 3 to 16. teacher um, and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, and you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. We know this first time. We know what Jesus did. We know that he was the Son of God. And we know that without any shame, he girded up his loins and he bent down and he washed his disciples' feet. And he did it not as a symbol. He did it out of love. He did it to continue to demonstrate to us that that is, okay, how we are to live our lives. Serving one another. Whether we're at the top or at the bottom, we're called to be Christ-like. Ephesians 5 verse 1. And I said this earlier. We're called to be imitators of God. Ephesians 5 verse 1. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dear, dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Be imitators of God. Colossians 3, a couple of verses on, a couple of chapters on. Verse 13. Bear with each other, forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. These are some of the, 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 the characteristics of, of Christ. He's the role model. It's a challenge. We could keep going. We could pull out loads of things in the Bible. You know, he was a healer. He was, he was all of these things. He was a great teacher, a great person. His model for us, though, was about flipping the, the norm, the hierarchies, the standards that we set ourselves, that the world expects on its head. That was his, his thing, okay? He didn't come as, to lord it over anybody. He came <coughs> to serve and to, to transform the way that people saw a king. The way that people see kings, we lift them up. And he's saying, I'm not going to be put there. I'm going to be on my knees down here. And I'm going to show you, my people, my disciples, how to be like me. Because that is what the Father's heart is for us. And that's the challenge. If we are going to be Christ in this community, okay, and Christ to all nations, we are to forget where we've come from, our church history, the hurts, the joys even. Remember them, okay? But don't be defined for the future by everything that has gone behind. It is pushing on. 
okay, as both Joe and Alan said in, in, in the last couple of weeks, pushing on for what Christ put hold of us for. Because it's not here, we're not the finished article today. But we are becoming more and more and more Christ-like. More and more and more like God. Until in the end, okay, when he comes back, we will be the perfect reflection of him. That is his desire for us. That is the desire of the Holy Spirit working in us. Is that we will be Christ in this world. Okay, and that is the challenge for us. So how are we going to do it? Because otherwise, okay, it's okay and we'll just keep saying, well, it's all right for Jesus, because he was like the Son of God, wasn't he? We are here to put this into practice. Okay, and they're going to happen in small steps. So whether it is feeding the homeless, that is being obedient to God's word, okay? And we, a church, are richly blessed, okay, by by what we hear and the stories and the, and, the, and the answers to prayers that we hear, okay, when we come back from feeding the homes. But that is just one element of it, okay? We are doing and we are being obedient, okay? And we're doing it out of love, okay? Because you don't give up your Saturday morning, okay, because you just feel you have to do it. We do it because we love to do it. Okay? You know, in the Bible, it does talk about, I think in Acts, isn't it? Acts 20, it talks about it is better to give than receive, doesn't it? And I think Paul is quoting Jesus when he says it is better to, to give than um, receive. You know, it is a blessing watching our children walk around and, and give out presents. It didn't make me well up yesterday, you know, just seeing them go and give some food up and, and give a Christmas present out. Um, I just thought, that is what it's about. We're trying to be Jesus in a world that doesn't know him. That is the desire, isn't it, of our hearts. So we need to practice. Uh, and I'm not saying that you're going to go from zero um, to, to Jesus in one step. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is that unless you take the first step, you're never going to get to the point where you want to be, which is being like Jesus. And so it's going to be a challenge. And what, you know, as Alan said last week, you know, unless we can forget the past and stop <coughs> time by our history and be, start to be defined by the vision that Christ has got for us, our identity in Christ. Christ lived and died so that we would have all authority yeah. today. Amen. Not in six months' time. Today. That is the honest truth of the situation. Okay? We have all authority in Christ. To command the sick to be healed. That is the, that's the reality today. Not in six months' time, when we're a little bit older and a little bit more mature. If we understand our identity, all things are possible. All things are possible. And God is asking us. Jesus is asking us. The Holy Spirit is asking us to move in us. When we hear a small voice, to take a step. To take a little step. To submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit and to move and to start to move. Because that, brothers and sisters, is the only way that this world is going to be transformed. Okay? Because we've got a role model, and you read the New Testament, the role model continues, every single person constantly pushes back to Christ likeness. Paul says, okay, I have not got it, but I'm striving on for what Christ has got for me. I want to get it. I'm not there yet. And Paul was a brilliant teacher, a brilliant evangelist. And he said, I haven't got it all. I want to be Christ-like, more Christ-like. So we've got to put it into practice. So let's just give a couple more examples of, of, of Christ-likeness. Um, 2 Corinthians. Um, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. I don't mind, it's Joan and Beesman too. Um, 2 Corinthians I'm going to start giving you the wrong Bible verses in a minute, right? Just, just to slow it down. 
to your indifference and humility. <coughs> and we, who with unveiled face, with faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. That's the hope, isn't it? That with the Spirit working in us, okay, that we are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory. Okay? which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is working in our lives, okay, there is hope that that is going to happen in our lives. Luke 6. Verse 4. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, um, and be raised up with him on the last day. My Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son, believes in him, shall have eternal life, and be raised up with him on the last day. Okay? Sorry, Luke's... Uh, oh, sorry, where, where am I? Luke 6. Oh, I'm in John. John 6 was good, though, wasn't it? Was John 6 good? That didn't, that didn't sound quite like what I thought it was. But yeah. I'm hanging up crazy. Luke 6, 40. Sorry, yeah, that's it. A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. That's it. <coughs> when we're fully trained, we're going to be like him. When we understand our identity, when we understand who we are, we're going to be like him. You know, these are God's words. And it's important. It's important that we start to understand that that is the desire of his heart for us. And John, um, John 13, so that's where I love John. John 13. examples that constantly come back to us, isn't it? About the fact that I, I, I tell you that the truth, that no servant is greater than his master, nor the messenger greater than the one who sent it. You know, I have set the example that you, uh, that you should do as I have done for you. It's clear what God wants from us. John 13, John 15, verse 12. I, I, I spoke about this a while ago. So verse 12, John 15. Jesus gave us a command, didn't he? Okay? That uh, my command is this, to love one another, okay, love each other as I have loved you. He showed his disciples love. He showed us love by dying on the cross. Okay? And his command for us was that we, okay, love one another. Our challenge is to be Christ-like. To be the like what it says in the Bible. Now, it's really hard, isn't it? Because it was easier for the disciples. They had Jesus. They, you know, they spent all the time with him. They're kind of with him all the time for years. And um, so it's quite easy to kind of be a role model if you're just following Jesus. And you kind of spend all the time with him and hearing him speak hearing uh, what he, he wanted them to do. But he consistently modelled this, didn't he? he? He said to the twelve, he said, go out and do it, practice it. He wanted them to practice it. Because he knew there was going to come a time when he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Then he sent the 72 out, he said, look, do these things, I want you to practice it. Your challenge, my challenge, is to practice what it says. Because we're never going to get to the end, without that. We can't become reflections of, of the living God without putting into practice the stuff that it says in the Bible. So, when we talk to each other, um, you know, about forgiveness, it's, it's like really hard, isn't it? Because we all have grumbles. There's always a reason to be grumpy with somebody. Well, in my world there is. OK? 
Okay? Anybody that lives with me knows that I am a grumbler. I am just like a moany mini. Okay? Joe always said, just behave. And I'm just like, don't. But that is what I'm like. Okay? But I'm, I'm commanded to forgive like God forgave us. I'm, I'm telling you these things about me so that it's important that you understand I'm not over here. I'm, not, I'm like higher and got it sorted. Okay? My desire is to be like Christ. And I don't do it, okay, all the time. But it's my desire. And our desire needs to be people that serve. People that look at the world the way that Christ looks at the world. Because there is no point having a vision that says, be Jesus in our community, if we actually mean we want to be something else. Because it doesn't say, I want to be like Jesus in our community. It says we want to be Jesus in our community. And Jesus, we know, okay, brought light and hope to those that were lost. He brought healing. He transformed people's lives, didn't he? Wherever he went. Is that our desire? Is it? Is that our desire? Yes or no? Yes? Yeah. Because that's the challenge then, isn't it? Is that if we, the people in this room, okay, are going to do that, okay, then we're going to have to start practicing. We're going to have to start doing the stuff it says in the book. And you're right, we don't have Jesus here to show us the way every single day. Not like that, like this. Speak to them like this. Don't do this, do that. But we do have the Holy Spirit. Alright? And the reason we have the Holy Spirit is because God has sent the Holy Spirit, okay, to live in our lives, okay, to guide us, to teach us, to show us what the Father is saying. And it's that Holy Spirit, okay, working in us that is going to help us to become more and more and more and more like Christ. That is what is going to transform this world. Us submitting to the Holy Spirit and us moving on when the Holy Spirit tells us to do things. And it's important, and I'm saying this today, if, okay, anybody in this church is not filled with the Holy Spirit or has not experienced that, you will need to come forward, okay, at the end and get prayer. Because you are not going to be able to do it otherwise. Okay? Otherwise, you will be striving and striving through your own effort to do the things it says in the Bible. And it will be in your own effort. And you will run out of resources. And you will constantly come up against walls. Because if you're not hearing from the Holy Spirit, how do you know which direction to go in? Because it's the Holy Spirit that is guiding us. It is the Holy Spirit that is telling us what we should be doing. And how we're going uh, uh, to save people in this world. Um, I put on the notice sheet, 1 John 2. And I just want to have a read of that. Because Alan said uh, something that, that last week. It was uh, Billy Graham, wasn't it? Yeah. That was saying, well, what, what exactly did he say? He was saying that if, if we were on trial... Uh, at the end of our lives, uh, and would they find enough evidence to condemn us, uh, to, sorry, to convict us as Christians? Would they find enough evidence to convict us as a Christian at the end of our days? And that, that for me is a real challenge, because I don't want to be driven by having to do more stuff, okay? But what I do want to be, okay, is at the end of my life, they, the, that God says, actually, you were my friend. I do know who you are. And on the balance of it all, I call you my friend. That's the desire of my heart. And the desire of our heart should be that that happens. That at the end of our days, that we stand in front of him and he can say, you are my friend. You are my friend. Okay? So one job. One job two. One job two. Um, 
Verse 6. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Now, the context of this verse, okay, is quite a topic, so I'll, we'll go back and we'll read from verse 3 to 6. But that's the focus for me, okay, is that whoever claims to live in him must walk as he did, as Jesus did. And that is the challenge. Let's not talk about it. Let's not debate it. Let's do it. Because that is how this world is going to be changed. Right, let's just read from verse 3, okay? We know that we have, we have come to know, sorry, we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. It's tough, isn't it? But it's the reality of where we want to be. And I keep coming back to our vision is to be Jesus in the community and to all nations. And if that is what it is, and you're sat here today because you believe in that vision, then the next question you're going to have to ask yourself is, well, how is it going to happen? And like I said, it's only going to be through a relationship with God and the Holy Spirit and walking as Jesus walked that is going to turn it around. 1 John 3, just to put the pages on, verse 2 to 3. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we, what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see, uh, sorry, uh, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, as he is pure, just as he is pure. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. The end of verse 2, verse two it says, But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall, we, we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him. If we walk like him, we're going to be like him. We're going to be transformed into a Christ-like nature. 1 Corinthians 3. Two Corinthians three, yeah, uh, seventeen. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the, the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We saw that this morning, didn't we? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Okay, and we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And I read here that this morning. We like to quote Romans, don't we, uh, about our minds being transformed, Romans 12, verse 2, okay, about the transforming of our minds. The time has come, okay, 
The time has come for us, the people of God, to start making some choices. Because we can't say one thing and do another. We can't do it, okay, if we believe what it says in the Bible. The time has come to walk like Jesus. The time has come for us to model and be imitators of God. The time has come to serve. The time has come for us to stop the moaning and to be uh, forgiving of each other, okay? And remember that that is ultimately the most important thing. The time has come for us not to be defined by our past anymore, but be defined by the hope that we are not being transformed into Christ's likeness. That is the hope that we have through the authority of the Holy Spirit moving in our lives, okay? And our identity in Christ. We will get there. The time has come, brothers and sisters, for us to become more Christ-like. For you and for me to become more Christ-like. And we're going to do that by reading and submitting to the Holy Spirit. Reading about what Jesus' nature is like. And by submitting to the Holy Spirit when he says, do this. Just do it. This week, <coughs> ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And then, do the next thing. Which is when he asks you to do something, and he answers, do it. Do it. Don't kind of wait for like lots of people to confirm it. Just do it. Okay? And see if you don't have something to testify about next week. About what God has done. Because that is the challenge. That is the challenge. If we're going to see a world transformed, it can only be transformed by Jesus. And that, brothers and sisters, is you and me moving in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to finish. And I wanted to challenge you, because I want to challenge myself. We can't sit here on a Sunday morning and, and think about these things without really challenging ourselves. <coughs> what is it? that we need to do to become more Christ-like. Because I need to do it. I know I need to do it. I don't want to sit here and see a world not saved. I don't want to sit here and, and at the end of my days, God say, well, actually, I didn't really know you. And it didn't quite do it all. We've got a plan, okay? We've got a vision. <coughs> God has put us uh, ahead of us things to do. And it's a challenge. All of this is a challenge. But it's all possible. All possible through the Holy Spirit. Please this week, think about what it is. When we're standing on the edge of something new and you want to be taken further and deeper than you've ever been before, when you sing those words and you think about those, what is it that you want him to do? What is it that you want? Because we need to know that. Pray this week that he will reveal that to you. Pray this week that he's going to speak to you. Pray this week that we can put it into practice. Pray this week, okay, that we are becoming, that you will become more Christ like, because I'm going to pray that this week. The desire of my heart is that. Okay? Please, if, if anybody does want prayer, uh, I, I mentioned about the Holy Spirit. It is really, really important, okay, that we are we are guided and submitted to the Holy Spirit. If anybody, okay, do not. I, I know when people come forward, they go, "Oh well, it might be the Holy Spirit." You can come for anything for prayer, okay? But please don't leave this place if you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit. It is so, so important to how we're going to move on in Christ. 
Okay, it's massively important. So please don't feel ashamed if you're coming forward. Do not, okay, just do not leave this place to bear. Because otherwise it's not going to happen. You can't do all this stuff without the Holy Spirit moving in your life. Whether you're young or old, you just can't do it. Okay, so please don't leave this place without someone praying that the Holy Spirit touch your life today and you fill it with the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's it. Let's come. Let's inform. It is vital that we do come to be baptized and be filled with the Holy Spirit. It does sort of play, and I think it's opportunity. But it's, the meeting is not over. I'm really saying, if you really want to be alive, Jesus, then you need to know to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to the disciples when he was transferred. When he went up into heaven, go to Jerusalem and wait until the Holy Spirit comes. Mm -hmm. Wait. That was the command of Jesus. Because he didn't want the disciples doing it in their own strength because they were fair. But when the Holy Spirit comes, it will be my disciples. If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, then come now. Thank you.